Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you about this game here. Well, the game containing these two deck boxes here. Uh, for this game I decided to get the print and play version, so uh, I got all of the files, I printed the cards because it's a card game, then I, I sleeved the cards and now I store them in these two deck boxes. And when I purchased the game, not only did I get the core set, but almost all of the expansions. So today in this video, I can pretty much give you the uh, complete picture for this game. The game I'm talking about is called Villages. It's a game for two to five players that plays in a very short time. It's a very quick game. And the reason why I wanted to check out this game in particular is because this game is published and manufactured by an American company named The Game Crafter. And for those who don't know me yet, I've also made a game with the same company called War for the Moon. And I'm gonna place a link somewhere here on screen that you can click on if you want to check out my game as well. And so before I went on and self-published my game with the Game Crafter, I wanted to take a look at one of their most popular games. And apparently Villages was one of them. So in this video, let me tell you more about this game. Let me show you how it plays. Then we're gonna come back at the end with my final thoughts. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is this small deck of cards here. This deck includes a set of cards from the Distant Lands expansion. The Distant Lands expansion adds location cards to uh, the game, locations that players will explore as they play through the game. Every location is going to set a special rule that all the players will have to abide to while playing a round of villages. So, if you've got this expansion, the Distant Lands expansion, the first thing you want to do in order to set up the game is shuffle these location cards. Then you reveal the card at the top, and you take a good look at it, you read the text. Then you place this uh, deck of cards down here in the center of the table, so that all players can look at the card and learn about the special rule for the round that is about to start. Here we have a reference card that recaps all the phases in a turn and the actions you may take, just in case you forget. Here instead we've got our personal score card, which helps us keep track of the score as we play multiple rounds of this game. And in the center, we've got the, uh, these two decks of cards that I just got out of their deck boxes over there. We still have to set up the discard pile though. To do that, we reveal a number of cards that is equal to the number of players. In this walkthrough, I'll be illustrating a true player game, so we just have to reveal two cards and place them beside the deck to form the discard pile. As you may have noticed, I'm using sleeves of different colors for this game. That's okay, because with all the expansions thrown in, the game is essentially one massive pile of cards, and it's really impossible to recognize the cards based only on the color of the sleeves. At this point, we just have to draw our starting hand. We pull eight cards from the top of the deck, and then we take a look at them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got the mummy, black unit, uh, a purple uh, unit, the builder, then we've got the merchant, yellow card, the paladin, green unit, then we've got a free orange, units here, the, ar the, the Builder, the Archer, and the Orc, and then uh, another black card, the Skeleton. 
So we've got a couple of black units and three orange units, and then just the three single units of three uh, different colors. So if we are going first, we uh, first of all we have to draw two more cards. When you start a new turn, you always have to draw two cards, and you can draw cards from either the deck or the discard pile. In this case, we are just going to draw two cards from the deck. So we pulled two gray cards. Now, gray cards can, they can either be uh, animal cards or building cards. In this case, we pulled uh, a pig, uh, which is a, an animal card, and then the sanctuary, the building. As our first action, we are going to lay down these three orange units here and build an orange village. You can only build one village per turn and you need at least three cards of the same color to build a village. The builder in our orange village allows us to add building cards to the village that we've just built. So I can also lay down here this sanctuary and add it to the village. The other action I can take is discard a card. When you take this action, you end your turn. So now I'm going to discard the, uh, I guess, the purple builder here. I'm going to discard him and uh, put it into the discard pile to end my first turn. On his turn, the second player has built a village of his own. A blue village with four blue units. And he has ended his turn discarding a black unit. Let's take a closer look at the card that he has just discarded. So he has discarded the death, a black unit, a very ominous card. He certainly wanted to get rid of this card, huh? <laughs> Since it's our turn now, we really want this death card to complete our set of black cards that we got in our hand. So as our first card, we're going to pick up this card from the discard pile. Then as for our second card, we are going to pull an another card here from the top of the deck and add it to our hand. Now I can go ahead and place down these three black units that I've got in my hand and add a new village to my tableau here. My turn is not over yet. I also want to give away some of the cards in my hand so that I can reduce my hand size. I have this blue wizard here that I've just drawn. This unit's color matches the color of a village our opponent built the previous turn. So. I'm going to make the wizard join the opponent's blue village and so I'm going to place it down in the opponent's village like this and since the opponent's village contains a farmer, this unit here, let me show it to you, I can also lay down my pig into that village. A farmer allows you to add animals to a village, just like a builder here allows you to add buildings. So I'm going to put this farmer back into his village, and I'm also going to add my pig to that village. Now I'm left with just two cards in my hand, and... I'm going to discard one of these two cards to end my turn. So let's see, let's discard the merchant. Now you're probably asking yourself why I gave away my precious cards. I did that because I'm trying to get rid of all of my cards before my opponent does that with ease. If you are the first player who empties his hand, you are awarded a juicy bonus of 10 points which really, believe me, really gives you an advantage over your opponents during the final scoring. 
Normally, players will try to empty their hand before the other players to get the bonus. But there are other, there are other times when instead they may try to stall the game a little bit to try and rack up more points by laying down more cards. It really depends on the player situation in their tableau. It's the second player turn again, and the second player is going to draw two cards from the top of the deck. He pulls two black units. He just got rid of a black unit the previous turn, the death, right there, that we snatched up and then used to build our own village. So now, the second player is a bit indecisive, he doesn't really know what to do with these two cards. He can give them away and place them down here in my black village, just like I did with the wizard and the pig before, over there. Or, better yet, he could challenge me in a battle to try and steal one of my black units, maybe get back the death, and then be able to form his own village, his own village of black units. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to try and get back the card he has discarded on his previous turn, the death. The opponent, therefore, decides to launch an attack on my black village using a card in his hand that he places face down in the center of the table. He could have used the unit in his blue village as an attacker, but he decided to hire a unit from his hand. Now, I don't know what the opponent has decided to throw at me because the card is face down. I can defend using a unit from the village that is under attack, so I could pick one of his three units and send it out here to face off the enemy. Or I could hire a unit from my hand. In my hand, I'm left with only the Paladin. This card is actually a great defender, because the Paladin's power gets a boost of 2 points if he is defending. That is, the ability of this card, which is listed here on the card. Let's take a closer look. Plus 2 power when defending. This ability boosts the Paladin's power up to 4, and makes this uh, unit here uh, a pretty staunch defender. So this card is a great option for defending, so now I'm going to hire the Paladin, and I place him face down here in the center of the table, right next to the uh, other face down unit. Now, me and the opponent, we are going to flip over our unit cards, and then we're going to compare their power. In this fight, for example, we have the Paladin facing the Mighty Dragon. Thanks to its ability, the Paladin's defensive power goes up to 4. Even so, the Paladin doesn't stand a chance against the Dragon's overwhelming attack power of 5. The Dragon snatches the victory, and the opponent wins this battle. Since the opponent is the winner of this fight, he can now claim a reward. He could choose to take my defender as a trophy, or he could choose a card from the village he has attacked. One of his three cards. Since the beginning, he wanted to lay his hands on the black unit, the death. So he takes it, and he adds it to his hand, thus completing his own set of black cards. He can now lay down this set of cards on his turn. However, because he has launched an attack on my black village, he has ended his turn. As for our two fighters here, they're both going to be destroyed and they're going to join the respective player's graveyard and are out of the game. Nothing happens to the two black units left in my black village. They simply remain face up on the table.
It's my turn again. I have no cards in my hand because I lost my last card here, the Paladin, in that gruesome battle against the Mighty Dragon. Even though I played my last card, the game is not over yet. A player has to empty his hand during his own turn to trigger the end of the game. So I still get to draw two cards from the top of the deck. I have pulled a white card, the fairy, and a hero, a green unit. White cards can be paired with units of any color. You can literally place them down in any village in your kingdom except for the black village. You see, black and white, they are opposite colors, so I can't do this, but I can very easily place the fairy here in my orange village. As for my last card, I can simply discard it to the discard pile and end my turn. And in doing so, I finally trigger the end of the game. This game hasn't really convinced me at all. It's a very, very light game and a very, very simple game. Uh, it's actually more than simple. Even a three-year-old uh, would be able to play this game. Uh, so it, it's way too simple. It's not a very involving card game. There's no strategy at all. There's not much interaction apart from some very random uh, fights. But actually, in, in our matches, uh, we didn't get those uh, many fights at all. Uh, because essentially you need a good cards to uh, declare an attack. Otherwise, you're not going to get a benefit from attacking at all in the first place. So, uh, all of the mechanics that are there in this game, uh, the fighting mechanic, uh, drafting your cards and managing your hand, and managing your tableau, all of those aspects, I think it's... Um, it looks as if this game was at the starting point and then it needed a better development. I know probably the author wanted to keep it a simple game, a very simple game, but here it, this game is way too simple. Uh, there's also a very, very strong luck factor. So most of the games are really based on luck and random, uh, and random factor. So whether you, uh, you, you draw a very good hand, we've got, uh, you've got a lot of cards with the, the same color so that they match each other and it's very easy to just lay them down and you can easily get the upper end on your opponent. I know that this is kind of mitigated in the long run because you can be uh, on a roll for like many, many, many rounds uh, consecutively, but, but still, uh, the, the various games that I played was very often, I, for, for example, I, since I'm a very, um, very uh, unfortunate person who has, hasn't got much luck in life, I, I got also, I always got these shitty hands, while my, uh, my, my friends, my opponents, they always got better hands than, than me, uh, than I did, and they always ended up shutting the game down on me, and I also, and I always got uh, creamed, pretty much. Uh, so uh, I can say that I enjoy playing this game. I think the game comes together pretty nicely in terms of the art. The art is pretty well done, so kudos to the author of this game uh, and the designer of this game, because I think the art did a, a pretty nice choice there. And I'm probably, I now I, I'm not too sure about this, but I think that probably the success of this game relies entirely on the art, because the art is cute. Okay, and I know that out there there are many people who are great, great fans of pixel art and uh, pixelated characters. If you are uh, that kind of person, I'm not personally, but I own another game in my collection, which is called Pixel Tactics, and that is a much more involving card game that has uh, a lot of pixelated illustrations. So if you're a fan of pixel art, I will say go and check out that game. Uh, I'm going to make a review video of that game as well, but I'm, gonna to, I'm going to upload on my channel. So check out my review video here. Maybe I can place another link and you can go uh, look at that, re at that review uh, for that game. Uh, that Pixel Tactics is a game that I actually enjoyed playing a lot. And I still 
enjoy playing it a lot with my friends. It's just a two-player game. Here, uh, I, I like that this game can accommodate many players around the table, and I think the name is actually nicer to play if you play with uh, a higher player count, so with four or five people. Uh, with two people, mm, this game is not, it's not that great at all, even with three with free players. But still, the game the game doesn't change that much. Uh, I mean, it's just more enjoyable because there are more people around the table and you're just laughing a lot more, you're chatting while you're playing the game, you're not just entirely focused on the game because the game has no strategy to offer. This is my review for Villages. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I hope I haven't been too cruel with this game. Hope to see you in my next review that's gonna be about Pixel Tactics. Stay tuned from Italy. Stay tuned, stay safe from Italy. Bye. Ciao.